Hi everybody, my name is Mark and I'm one of the R&D engineers here at 45 Drives. Marketing was nice enough to let me take over the studio today to tell you about a new cockpit module that I've been working on. And this one greatly simplifies the deployment of a Ceph cluster right inside the browser of our Houston Command Center. If that sounds clear as mud, no sweat, stay tuned and I'll give you a proper rundown of this module. We've got a lot to cover here, so let's set sail on our maiden voyage with Ceph Deploy. So we here at 45 Drives have been using Ceph as part of our clustered storage offerings for years now. But as you may know, there are a lot of steps involved in setting up a Ceph cluster. This typically involves installing and configuring many different programs and services on multiple servers, many with unique settings and highly specific requirements. Deploying a Ceph cluster manually is therefore an extremely time-consuming and involved process. So for years now, we've been using a technology called Ansible to install and configure Ceph and other services on multiple servers. All of this configuration is typically performed from a single machine. This machine in Ansible's terminology is referred to as the administrator node. There are two main types of files that the administrator node uses to set up a cluster. These are Ansible playbooks and Ansible inventory files. Ansible playbooks contain the step-by-step -step instructions that need to be followed in order to get your systems working as desired. Playbooks will make the changes to the systems as they are run on the administrator node. Ansible playbooks often only make these changes to the systems that are in a certain category, or in Ansible's terms, which systems are assigned a given role. And this is where inventory files come in. An Ansible inventory file contains the details specific to your systems that you want to make changes to, such as which role a given system is assigned, what network interface to use, specific IP addresses, or any other information that a playbook is going to need prior to running. While Ansible has made it much easier to install and configure software automatically, it requires a lot of intricate setup which involves manually editing multiple inventory files from the command line. When deploying Ceph, the playbooks also need to be run in a specific order if we want a working cluster in the end. Ceph Deploy is designed to remove much of that tedium, only showing us the options that we need to configure and ensuring that we don't run the wrong playbook at the wrong time. And since Ceph Deploy is a cockpit module, we can do all of our configuration from within the browser. So I'm going to walk you through the basic deployment of a Ceph cluster on Rocky Linux, and I'll be using three storage servers for this setup. There are Rockinator 1, Rockinator 2, and Rockinator 3. There are also two servers that will act as our Ceph gateways, and these are Rocky Gateway 1 and Rocky Gateway 2. All of the servers will be configured using Ceph Deploy, and Rockinator 1 will serve as our administrator node. So let's get Ceph Deploy installed and start getting this cluster deployed. So I'll start off from the official GitHub page for Ceph Deploy. In the README, I've put installation instructions for Rocky Linux here. There is an RPM package for Ceph Deploy hosted on the official 45 Drives repository. Setting that up on Rocky Linux is as simple as downloading and running a setup script on the administrator node. So I'll SSH into it and we'll download that setup script by using that curl command. I've just pasted it in here. I'm just going to make it executable, chmod plus x, and then setup. And then from there, we can run it by typing dot slash setup. And that's worked. So what that's done is it's made a file in etsy yum.repos.d, and it's our 45drives.repo file. Now, I'm going to need to enable the testing branch um, because this is still in pre-release. So you can just do that with this little command here if you don't want to get out a text editor. So what that's done is change that enabled from a 0 to a 1 in the testing repo. And now we can yum install cockpit ceph deploy. And I'm also going to install cockpit navigator so that we can use cockpit to modify all of our files. All right, so once that's got that, it's going to install Ansible 45D and also it'll install Cockpit if that isn't already installed. So once that's done, the last thing I'm going to do here is actually use systemctl to enable Cockpit because I hadn't done that prior to this. So that's how you start the Cockpit socket. And then from there we can get out of the terminal and we can go to the IP address of Rockinator 1 
on port 9090 and just log in with our regular credentials. And now we shall embark on our journey to the magical land of Hub World. Hub World. Hub World. Uh, huh? Where am I? Uh, oh, I'm just in a menu. So welcome to Hub World, my nickname for the main menu that just kind of stuck. So this is the place you'll keep coming back to during the deployment process. Kind of like a beloved childhood video game. The idea is that you need to complete the current step in order to unlock the next stage. So let's get going. World 1, Stage 1, Pre-Configuration. Okay, so it says here that each host should be able to ping all other hosts using a host name. So for that we're going to use Navigator and we're going to go to slash Etsy and modify the host file. Brett always calls this the poor man's DNS, which I think is fitting. So basically what this is going to be is just a copy and paste exercise for me. I've got the IPs of every single server and the host name for it. And we'll just slam that into Etsy hosts. And then we'll hit save. Thank you, Josh, for making that module. Uh, terminal. So let's try pinging all of our hosts, or at least a couple of them. Okay, we're able to reach Rockinator 2 and 3. So I think we're good there. So what's next? Bonds. I'm not making any bonds. We're good. SSH keys. Okay, so let's hop on over to the terminal. And we're going to type SSH keygen. I'm just going to go with the defaults. And so now we've got a key generated. So we can copy that over to one of the other servers. What this is going to allow us to do is essentially manage that server via SSH, which is how Ansible works, um, without having to type in a password. So I've done that with Rockinator 2. I'm just going to go through all the other ones that has to be done, including Rockinator 1, which is a, a step that a lot of people sometimes forget. So that's all done. So now, because we have SSH, we can also use rsync. That's good. We can. Uh, send our, our copy of Etsy hosts over to Rockinator 2, 3, and the other gateways. So that's what I'm doing here. So now they'll be able to know about everybody else as well. And there, I'm on Rocky Gateway 2 and it has the same Etsy hosts. So we are complete. Level 1 is cleared. So, let's move on to a harder level, Ansible Configuration. Okay, so we're going to have to add in our actual hosts that we're going to be deploying this cluster on. So Rockinator 1, and you can see that it's now able to be assigned a role. So let's just continue on with adding all of the hosts. Okay, so now that they're all added, we're going to assign roles to all of them. So all those three storage nodes are going to get the monitor, manager, and OSDs role. I'm going to give the metrics role to one of the gateways and the Ceph metadata server role and we're configuring Samba as well so we'll give them the SMB's role and now click update roles and we're good. Now we're going to get options based on the roles that were assigned. I'm just going over to look at my network interface because that's the first parameter I want to see. So ENS6, so I'm going to set that up. Now, if I had a different network interface on the other storage servers, I could set that independently here. Um, there's some rudimentary error checking that's occurring. So uh, I got to put in an IP address. So 0.0, .0 slash 16 is my public network. And the SMBs are going to need some parameters set. I'm just going to do a local SMB share. And I'll give it some VIP addresses. These ones are ones that I've already reserved. And since we have two SMB gateways, uh, we're gonna use two different VIP addresses. And then we're good. We're gonna update those options. And now the next step is to generate all of the inventory files. So there is the hosts inventory file. We're gonna generate all.yaml. That one's a big one. And you can see what's on there if you, uh, and hide it with that little I button and smbs.yaml. So those are the only ones we need to make for this. And then we can run a ping test. And when that passes, we've unlocked the done button so we can clear off stage two. 
So now it's time to try out Sefkor. This one's going to be the first boss fight. So, Device Alias is the first playbook in this two playbook step. That's going to configure all of the actual aliases for all of the hard drives in the Stornators that we're using. And that one worked just fine. So, the mini boss has been defeated, I guess. We can go to the next step now. And now we're going to deploy the core. Normally I would tell you to put on a pot of tea or something, but luckily for the two of us, I've sped this up about 2000%. So there are a lot of changes that occur from this playbook. And when it's done, spoiler alert, it passes. You can uh, see, yeah, we've got hundreds and hundreds of changes that have been performed, but we are done. Boss defeated. So now we can move on to the next level, which is CephFS. So this one, not too bad, just a single playbook. And we're gonna run through that, and that will configure the Ceph file system on all of the gateways, and so that they can get the data that they need from the storage nodes, and all that Ceph magic. That's done. So the next stage is going to be Samba. So let's run that playbook. Now, this will configure Samba on the two gateways that we have set up. However, it will not actually create the Samba shares. We're going to be using a different module for that one. And we're done. All right, we're nearing the home stretch now. Just a mad dash to finish off the dashboard. And that will give us our Ceph dashboard that you would then use to configure your Ceph storage. And that one worked just fine. And with that, our Ceph deployment is complete. Time to leave Hub World and get back to reality. Well, our cluster is deployed, but it looks like our Samba configuration is in another castle. Thanks everybody for tuning in today. If this video gets 100 likes, maybe I can come back for a part two and show you how to use our file sharing module to create and configure the Samba shares on the cluster that we just deployed. And be sure to smash that subscribe button if you want to see that one. So remember, Cockpit Ceph Deploy is in pre-release right now and our support team will be getting use out of it when deploying clusters in the future. So anyone who wants to play around with it, please do. We'd love to get feedback from you and the links to the GitHub repo are in the description below. This module will be released along with our full Rocky support on our servers on August 24th. I had a lot of fun working on this one and hopefully I'll get to see you all in the near future. Stay classy.